Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today in this video session we will discuss about the conceptual structure of geography. Uh, this particular concept or this particular structure has been taken from uh, the most important book or the famous book The Art and Science of Geography written by Sir R. D. Dixit. Uh, and it's a very good book and it's a must read book for any enthusiastic geographer or in academics it's, it's a must read book where, while you are studying thought or while you are understanding the subject. Okay, so what in this video we shall discuss, we shall discuss about the basic structure. Okay, what exactly the conceptual structure of geography is. Okay, and this thing you can use in your answers. This thing you can use in the answers of scope of geography. It will, This conceptual structure actually will define number of aspects. It will define the definition of geography. It will tell the nature of geography. It will tell the scope of geography as well. So, so it is in a summarized form or we can say it is a gist of the subject of geography. Okay, let's start with the main content. So, this is a whole chart of this thing. This you can find on in the book, The Art and Science of Geography. The book can be accessed through uh, different uh, e-commerce websites like Flipkart, Amazon, etc. You can buy it from there. So, basically what geography is, what geography teaches about is taught in this particular chart. So, starting from the uppermost part phenomena so basically phenomena which is physical biotic or societal the phenomena can be of physical nature it can be of biotic nature or it can be of societal nature See, it, that means physical nature that means it can be the phenomena must be occurring in the on the surface of the earth or it is a biotic phenomena that is it's occurring between the uh, biotic organisms that is the living organisms on the surface of the earth or it is a societal phenomena where the phenomena is occurring in a particular society of human beings so phenomena which is physical biotic or social and this particular phenomena which is physical biotic and social is occurring in a particular space and in a particular time but it, these two words are very much important in the subject of geography space and time the word space is the word region okay geography is a spatial science a particular area or a particular region it can be a small scale large scale meso scale anything so basically any phenomena which is occurring on a space on a particular region on a particular area in a particular time okay any phenomena occurring in space and time via so number of methods are given here so phenomena which are occurring through space in, in a space and time via the particular phenomena which is occurring on a space and a time and how do we know about this phenomena that is a physical phenomena biotic phenomena societal phenomena but how do we get the information about that phenomena by the first hand and second hand knowledge the first thing the primary data and the secondary data the primary data is the first hand knowledge the secondary data is the second hand knowledge secondly we get the information about this phenomena by field works field work is very important aspect in the subject of geography third is mapping next expository reports that means the descriptive reports or the description of a particular area in a pattern of a report okay that is the expository report so how do we get the information through first hand knowledge second hand knowledge field work mapping expository reports photo interpretation okay we get the photo that is the aerial photogrammetry part thing next is statistical techniques the quantitative method that flourished in the subject of geography after the theory of positivism in, uh, in the somewhat year 1950s and 1953. Okay, so the statistical method that we take into account by uh, while we collect the information about a particular phenomena. Next, this geospatial technique. This I have added. Okay, in the book, the geospatial technique heading is not there. Okay, because now geospatial techniques are very important in the field of geography so basically what are the methods that is so basically phenomena which are physical biotic societal occurring in a space and time and how do we get the information about this phenomena from first and second knowledge field work mapping expository reports photo interpretation spatial techniques and geospatial techniques statistical techniques sorry so now further these all the phenomena or these all the methods they constitute a geographical fact what they constitute they constitute a geographical fact and these facts are drawn on certain scale okay so these facts are taken on certain scale that is large scale small scale or medium scale which now constitute geographical distributions okay now 
if we get if we now uh, uh, got the data of a particular thing or a particular fact or a particular or we get the information about a particular fact on a certain scale now we constitute now we see the geographical distribution the distribution of that particular phenomena okay so till now what we have discussed phenomena which is occurring in a space and time through number of methods they constitute geographical facts now these facts are urgent on a certain scale medium scale large scale small scale and these all phenomena or these all facts they constitute a particular geographical description okay and this description is also on a particular certain scale got it so on a certain scale we see these geographical distributions and these distributions are done via two things so there are two keywords aerial association and spatial interaction okay so these distributions are studied using aerial associations which constitute the normal regions of accordant features okay a very important term to study here aerial association what what does aerial association means aerial means a particular area okay related to a particular area and association means how the things are associated in between them the biotic components the abiotic components the natural components the environmental components how these all the components are related to each other and how these components are associated with each other so these aerial associations which constitute a normal regions of accordant feature accordant features means which have similar in their properties which have the same characteristics or the similar characteristics so a region which has number of similar properties is can be a, uh, a normal region with accordant features and these features are formed by the aerial association second term is spatial interaction constituting functional regions tied together by per patterns of circulation okay so basically spatial interaction means the interaction that is happening in a particular space okay which constitutes functional regions functional regions tied together by patterns of circulation so patterns of circulation how the things are circulating over the particular space okay that is particular the patterns of circulation the what so basically what does a functional region means functional region is basically an area that is centered on a node or it is a centered on a focal point or a central hub you can say and that that particular region is a very important point of view because it is surrounded by number of interconnecting linkages or it is surrounded by number of interconnecting patterns of circulation okay so basically functional region tied together by the patterns of circulation means that the number of areas or the number of spatial uh, spatial aspects that are near a nodal point or a central hub that are tied together that are tied together by the pattern of circulation so these two phenomena aerial association and spatial interaction they help us to explain the aerial differentiation it is a very important phenomena so what is basically aerial differentiation aerial differentiation was a term that was promoted by uh, the prominent geographer richard hartshorn and basically aerial differentiation is one of the uh, perspectives of human geography in which importance is given to the uniqueness of the geographical area okay that how the that geographical area or that particular geographical space is unique okay rather than the standard model creation or the generalized model creation which was done earlier but in the aerial differentiation perspective the importance is given to the uh, uniqueness of that particular geographical area or in simple words we can say that aerial differentiation is a study of aerial variation of human and physical phenomena okay the variation area wise variation in a particular area or the, or different areas how there is a variation of human as well as physical phenomena okay and how they are casually linked together okay how these phenomena are casually linked together is can be termed as aerial differentiation okay. so basically through this conceptual structure through this chart we can understand that the ultimate goal of geography according to or we can say the ultimate goal of the ultimate structure of geography can be summarized into the study of aerial differentiation in the previous video we, we were discussing about the number of eight definitions that were given by number of geographers or the prominent geographers in which we have seen that number of geographers have used the term aerial differentiation in their definitions why because geography is the study of aerial differentiations that is the most modern or the most 
suitable definition i suppose is can we use to describe the subject of geography so basically through this chart we can understand that a phenomena which can be social biotic societal and it is occurring in a space and time and the information of that particular phenomena is uh, taken through number of uh, processes like primary secondary data field work mapping expository report photo interpretation statistical techniques geospatial techniques etc now they constitute number of geographical facts which are drawn on a certain scale and these geographical facts which are drawn on a certain scale now they constitute the geographical distribution because distribution is very important in the subject of geography and this distribution are also drawn on a certain scale the, these distributions can be shown via aerial associations and spatial interaction and these aerial spatial association and the spatial interaction of the particular phenomena which was occurring in a space and a time so the aerial association and spatial interaction help us to explain the aerial differentiation of that particular phenomena okay so this is the gist or the summarized way of this particular chart which, which was uh, presented by uh, sir ardi dikshit in his book the art and science of geography so I'll recommend this book it's a very good book and you must go through that book and uh, this was today's video and we'll come up with more videos like this so keep watching thank you for watching and jai hind